Today, we are talking about mindset and, you know, the right thinking can either enable you or it can completely disable you. And, you know, it's amazing what we you won't do if you think that you can't. So for example, if you said, I don't think I could ever do a 24 hour fast, or I don't think I could ever do a 48 hour fast. Maybe you think I can't even just do six hour eating window. So I have a friend who told me her mother stayed with her dad, who was an alcoholic for over 30 years. She never worked and she, her dad spent all the money on alcohol and the kids ended up having to take ketchup from Hardee's to make tomato soup. And that's what they ate. But then in the mom's mind, she felt like she could never work. She never worked and she thought that she never could. I have another friend who was being abused. She kept coming back over and over. She The the guy ended up sending her to the hospital. And in her mind, she still doesn't want to report him. She still doesn't want to take any action on doing that. Uh, I have another friend who told me her mother knew her dad was sexually abusing them, but she, in her mind, um, didn't want to didn't feel like she could physically take care of the kids. And so because of that, she allowed the sexual abuse. And so it's really important. I'm giving you these other examples because it's absolutely imperative that we realize how much our thoughts affect our actions, our attitudes, our moods. They are literally the forerunner for everything that we do or everything we don't do. And so I want to talk to you about getting your mind off the road behind you, letting go of what lies behind and saying, okay, look, it doesn't matter that I've broken up in the past. I've maybe eaten more than I should. I've gained weight. We're putting all of that in the past. And if you notice, some of you are just stuck, right? You're stuck in a rut. And this is why you're here because you've been in the same place for too long. You've gone around the same mountain and you've dug a rut and you feel like there's no way you can get out. Now, first, I want to talk about mind, what your mindset is. So your mindset is how you view the world. Now, where did you get your mindset from anyway, right? First of all, it's how you're wired naturally with your personality type. I don't know if you guys know what your disc score is. How many of you know the disc score? Have you heard of the disc score? So if you say... You are a high D. So people who are high Ds are very demanding. They're very strong-willed. You know, someone who is an I personality, you're going to tend to be a little bit more happier and jovial. That's just how God created you. If you're a high C, then you are going to be a little bit more negative. You're going to analyze things. The people you hang out with is the next most important thing. Now, we all know the example. Have you ever been a part of a group where one person's negative attitude affected everyone in the group? You know the saying, one bad apple can spoil the bunch. I have this wood basket that we hold all of our fruit in that I literally have to watch it every day because if I have one lemon that goes bad, all the other fruit around it will instantly go bad. Now, if it's farther away, it'll take more time to go bad. But we have to look at that fruit basket almost daily and throw away anything that even remotely looks like it's going bad. And, you know, when I saw that phrase of one bad apple can spoil the bunch, I actually looked it up because I was like, you know, where did this even start? But it does have some basis in science. So when apples or fruit begin to decay, They actually emit gases. And so if the rotting fruit is mixed in with a group of other fruit, the good fruit can absorb these gases and begin to rot too. So the same thing happens with people. And my husband always says, you know, have you ever noticed that all your good friends are thin? And I'm like, well, that's not exactly true. I have a lot of friends that aren't super, super thin. But yes, the majority of my friends, a lot of them are thin. And a lot of that has to do with I've built great relationships with people. When I ask people breakfast, lunch, and dinner, what do you eat, right? And then we ended up being friends. So I do have a lot of thin ones. But at the same time, I don't want to be hanging out with people who are 
thinking, oh, it's fine to be overeating and they don't like to work out and they don't want to be in great shape because I want to make sure the people that I spend the most amount of time are like-minded and their mental energy is where it needs to go. Now, I also have a lot of friends who maybe they say, I do want to lose weight. I do want to have a great mindset. Maybe they're not thin right now, but they're moving in that direction and they say, I want to do it. And those are also people I love to hang out with. Now, let me give you an example. I have a friend who is close to a billionaire. And one of the things, you know, I'm I'm a worker. Like I love to work. I go, go, go. I grind all the time. And I don't take a lot of vacations. And one of the things he did is he told me he takes lots of mini vacations, you know, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And he does those to recharge his battery and he works really hard, but he does take a lot of smaller vacations. And so for me, that inspired me to take a little bit more time off. And I don't do well with too much time off. So I just do little ones, you know, three days, four days, but do them more often and kind of fill my bucket up. And so another thing is to look at how you are raised. So you get a lot of your mindset from how you are raised. Like, you know, did, was your family the type of person who was a half full or half glass empty type of family, right? So if you were raised in a blue collar family, you might have heard, if you asked your mom for something, you'd be like, mom, can I get this? Mom, can I get that? Maybe she said, we can't afford it. Mom, can I get this? Mm, we can't afford it. Well, that might be a mindset that you've carried over even when you can afford it. I have a friend that was raised in a blue collar family and he heard that all the time and he is the tightest on money and he makes over $50,000 a month on passive income on all his rental properties. He has all these rental properties that he owns for cash and he won't buy a bigger house and he won't because he really wants to live on the water, but he won't do it because, and he has all this money in the bank, but in his mindset, he thinks he can't afford it. And so, you know, for me personally, I have a mindset that I have to work on on a regular basis. And that is that when I'm sad, I need to go to food to help me feel better. When I was young, um, my mom, my mom, when I was sad, my mom would say to me, let's go to TCBY for yogurt. Now, if you don't, how many of you have heard of TCBY? It stands for the country's best yogurt, but it's also like sweet frogs or red mango or kind of what the new places are. But my mom trained me that when I was sad or hurt, her first reaction was, let's go shopping or let's go to TCBY and let's get some food. And so I have to work really hard at saying, I'm having a bad day. I don't need to go into the snack drawer and have a a snack. I'm only going to be using food for physical fuel for my body. Repeat that in right now. Write that down. I'm only using food for physical fuel for my body. So the first step is to recognize what is the area of mindset that you need to fix? What was it when you were younger that maybe is a first reaction that you need to change that now? Did anyone else, did your mom or dad kind of when you were good or when you were sad, they used food for making you feel better. Well, it's almost January, and that means people are looking forward to a fresh start in 2021. And so if you're like half the population, you're looking forward to accomplishing your New Year's resolution. And a lot of you are saying, I want to lose weight and eat healthier in the new year. Well, here's the problem. Everyone's like, yes, yes, yes. The beginning of January, I'm going to be losing weight. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing that. And they don't do it. Well, here's why. A lot of people by not even February, they don't even make it till February and they've already lost sight of what their new year's resolution goals are. So here's the deal. What you need is accountability, not necessarily knowledge. Think about it. I know I need to work out five days a week, but guess what? When I have a personal trainer, I work out. I'm always there. If I have a personal training appointment, I have a guy that I work with three days a week. I never, ever miss. 
Now, on Tuesday, Thursday, I have like a small group class that I go to. It's, if I'm there, I'm there. If I'm not, I'm not. But guess what? Every once in a while, I'll miss on Tuesdays and Thursday. But here's what you need. You have to get an accountability partner and you have to get an accountability group. That's why we're doing a 30-day detox. What is this 30-day detox? First, you're gonna name what your eating window is. So six hours, four hours, eight hours, you choose it. And we're gonna add in some different things. Maybe you wanna add in a 24 hour fast. Maybe you wanna add in a 48 hour fast. And we're going to eat a keto flex clean eating program. You're gonna have no sugar, no honey, no refined foods, but you can have up to half a cup of gluten-free grain if you need it or half a cup of fruit per day. So basically, you're doing keto-ish. It's a keto flex. We're just having really clean foods and it starts January 4th. And what is it gonna do for you? It's gonna help hold you accountable. You're gonna have an accountability partner. You're gonna have weekly meetings and we are going to take your health to a new step. So if you wanna get 50% off, it's normally $60. It's only $30 for, that's a dollar a day for 30 days to have you be held accountable. We hope you join us. Go to ChantelRayWay.com slash 30 day detox. We'll add it in the show notes. So it's time for a change and you need to equip yourself by listening to things like this. We're going to be doing four more talks like this. So I hope that you will join us and you have to offset your mind with opposite, the opposite thing and fill it with positive things. So for example, if the highest, the highest performers say, I'm going to discipline my mind so that the second that I have a negative thought, I'm replacing it with a positive thought. So you're going to take the lie and replace it with a truth. Do you know that you talk to yourself more than anyone else? Just start paying attention to your thoughts and look at your self thoughts. Ask yourself when you're sitting in the car, laying in the bed, what are your thoughts? Are you thinking about food? Are you thinking about negative things. So here's a lie. A lie is I'll go to the gym tomorrow. The truth is I can go today and I can feel better if I work out. Another lie is I don't feel great today. So I'm kind of feeling tired. So I'll go exercise tomorrow. The truth is, if I go outside and go for a walk, I know I'll feel better. If I'm ever not feeling good, if I'm kind of feeling sluggish or I'm feeling down, I go walk outside and I know I'm feeling better. The lie is, I don't have time to exercise. The truth is, I can make time for exercise. I have to make it a priority. I can get up earlier. The lie is, I'm too busy to get healthy lunch. I'll just get fast food. The truth is, it's time to take, it's worth the time to take to make something healthy. It goes, God, then my health, then my spouse, then my kids, in that order. The lie is, I don't make enough money to save. The truth is, you can always save some amount, even if it's small. The lie is, I'll give more once I make more money. The the truth is, the Bible says, test me in this and see if I won't overflow your vats. And it says in Proverbs 3, 9, honor the Lord with your wealth, the fruit, first fruits of your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing. To me, the number one thing that people need to do to reset their mindset is confidence. Now, how do you get more confidence? Now, you have to realize that there's things in your life that rob your confidence, and there's things in your life that support your confidence. And I'd really love for you to identify the things in your life that when you do them, you feel more confident. Like, where do you feel insecure? Where do you not make moves? Where do you not move forward? I see a lot of people right now, they're playing not to lose instead of playing to win. So one of the things I have to do is I have to 
to surround myself with people who are confidence builders. I have a friend that owns a Keller Williams and he always says things like, well, your company is good, but you won't ever build a company that's as big or as good as Keller Williams. I call him my balloon popper because every time he gives me some encouragement, but then he kind of likes to pop that balloon. Like he's like, oh yeah, you guys are doing good, but you're not going to be as big as Keller Williams. Keller Williams is the number one, blah, blah, blah. Right. And so, you know, it's fine. I have, I've had to have talks with him and say, you know, you are a balloon popper and he's really working on it and he's gotten better at it. But I realize I can't spend as much time, you know, talking with him on the phone because it's not good for my confidence. Number two, you need to watch what you fill your brain with. Do you know that in the last 15 years, I've not watched the news at all? Now, maybe if it's like on at the gym or something like that, I'll glance at it, but I've never once in 15 years intentionally turned on the news or watched it. And the reason is because I've never once watched the news and got done and said, oh, wow, I feel amazing right now, right? You watch the news and you're like, wow, our world's going to hell in a handbasket. You know, even through the pandemic, I haven't watched the news at all. I haven't watched it once. And so for me, in order for me to keep my positive mindset, I know that I can't do that. Number three, I want you to every day Watch and read books and listen to podcasts that motivate you to take action. If you've ever read the book, there's a book called Who Moved My Cheese? And I'll just give you a kind of a preview of it. But there's two mice and there's cheese being brought to them every day. And one day the cheese stops coming. And one mouse says, well, I'm just going to sit here until they bring my cheese back. And the other mouse says, well, I'm not sure that that cheese is going to come back. So I'm going to go out and look for more. And I believe if you're craving another level of happiness, joy, abundance, wealth, more intimacy, passion in your relationship, it takes confidence. And so you have to figure out what builds your confidence and do more of it. I'll give you an example. I just got back from Costa Rica. Um, The first three days, I wore no makeup. I wore a slummy outfit. I just looked like who did it and forgot about it. And I'll, sh- I've got, I'm going to post a picture of my hair when I was there. Like, this is how I like could care less what I look like. You guys are going to crack up, but you know, I just felt like I was eating a little bit more. You know, my confidence wasn't there. Um, I had zero makeup on. And finally I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this anymore. I like did my hair. I got my hair done. I put my makeup on every day. I started wearing a real cute outfit. I started eating healthier and I was like, oh, my confidence is right back. So you have to figure out things like that. So it's like, yeah, I could choose to just slum it, but guess what? I did so much better when my confidence was back up. Next, you need to find things that fill your tank. It, it goes back. There's things in life that when you do them, they will chip away at your confidence and there's others that will fill it up. What are things that fill your tank. So is it being healthy? Is it working out? Is it spending time with friends? Is it spending time with family? For me, it's getting a massage. The number one thing that I can do is get a massage. That really fills my tank. Me going somewhere warm or laying out, that really fills my tank. So you've got to figure out right now, what can you do that fills your tank. The next thing is to push yourself to do things that allow you to be courageous and do those things. So you can allow, you want to flex your courage muscle. I get so tired of people saying things like, I can't do that. You know, I've gone on a three-day water fast, an eight-day water fast, a 24-hour fast, but You know, I've heard people like, let's say I'm fasting and I'll be like, oh, I'm on a 24 hour fast right now. And people will be like, I could never do that. I'm like, well, if you say you can't, you won't be able to, right? Like you can't just say, well, I don't have the willpower. What you need to say is no. 
What you're doing is not flexing your courage muscle. That's what you're doing. And that's what we need to do right now, gang. We must flex our courage muscle. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. All you have to do is go to ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. You need confidence, but what fills the confidence bin is when you're doing things that build confidence. So like, Courage is the precursor to confidence. You have to first have that courage. You know, my husband surprised me one day and he blindfolded me and he was, I was like, where are we going? He's like, I'm not telling you. He literally blindfolded me the whole time, drove me to Suffolk, Virginia and was like, surprise, we're going bungee jumping. Courage is jumping out of a plane when you're scared to death and hoping the parachute opens. You know, and I was thinking I could never do that. But guess what? We were there. We were on a plane. He pushed me and out I did it. And it did build my confidence. But you've got to avoid things that rob your confidence. Okay. Next is to stop hitting the easy button on everything. I like to be efficient, but you have to learn to what you need to hit the easy button on and what to stop hitting the easy button on. So, I know fasting isn't easy, but guess what? We're going to have a few things that'll make it a little bit easier. But you know what? Again, it goes back to here. Everything in life doesn't have to be easy. Some things are hard and it's beneficial for my body. And so if you can literally just say to yourself, I can do this. I know I can. There's millions of other people doing this. If they can do it, so can I. And you know, I don't want to live my life and say that I lived a good life. Like, I don't want to be at the end of it and been like, you know, I, I was a good mom. I was a good wife. I had a good relationship. No, you know, I want to do everything in my power to make everything that I do fantastic. And I'd rather fail, you know, trying than not to try. And so I'm hoping that I'll give you a little bit of inspiration here to say, if you're scared, congratulations, at least you're on the edge of thinking about doing something great. And, you know, you have to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. Write that down. You have to get uncomfortable to get comfortable. You know, I do a lot of dinners um, and sometimes, you know, I might've decided to eat breakfast and lunch, but I had a dinner appointment that night and I'm just like, you know what? I'm not going to eat anything. And so the first time it was uncomfortable and I've done it a few more times and I might say, you know what? The first time I was like, you know, I'm not hungry. And everyone's like, eat, eat. And I'm like, nope, I'm not going to because I already ate. My eating window is done and I'm not hungry, but I can still talk. And now I go out with friends and no, I say, no, I'm fasting. And they're like, oh, okay. They don't say anything about it. It's not weird anymore. But guess what? The first time it was uncomfortable, but you have to get uncomfortable to get to that place that it is comfortable. And now no one says a thing about it, right? So I want to talk to you right now about setting goals, okay? The most important thing that we're going to do together is we're going to set goals and then we're going to have people to help keep you accountable for those goals. So I want you to make goals that are going to stretch you, but not so much that you're not going to be able to do them. Um, a lot of you guys know my family all on my mom's side is Jewish. My family all on my dad's side is Muslim. And my, and my mom is now a Christian and I'm actually a Christian as well. But I want you to know that this is one thing I want to leave you with today. In the Bible, the Bible plainly says in Deuteronomy 1 verse 2, it says it only takes 11 days to go from Horeb to Kadesh Barnea by the Mount Seir Road. And yet it took the Israelites 40 years to get there. And so I want you to write in the chat, 
I'm not going to take 40 years trying to make an 11 day trip. And a lot of you have felt like you've been going around the same circle for way too long. And, you know, in verse six, you know, God spoke and he said, you spoke through Moses and said, you've stayed long enough at this mountain. You've stayed long enough at the same place. You've been feeling sorry for yourself way too long. You've been blaming someone else for way too long. You've been complaining way too long. And now it's time for a change. And remember this, God can't change anything if we won't change our ways. And it's it's useless to keep praying for God to change something if if it's we're not gonna, we're not willing to do any of the work and we're not willing to take the steps and we're going to keep those wrong mindsets. Okay, so what I want you to put in the chat right now is God can't change anything if we won't change. I'm not going to stay in the same mountain anymore. It's time for breakthrough. And what we're going to do is you're going to make three commitments. So what I mean by that is you're going to say, for example, this week, I'm going to do a 24-hour fast. Let me give you an example of something that's specific, measurable, and actionable. So you can say, I want to lose eight pounds by doing a third in 30 days, only eating one meal a day and eating no refined carbs and no sugar for 30 days. And the only thing I'm going to have is up to one serving of fruit and one serving of grain per day. Now, everyone's different. Everyone's going to make a different commitment. So whatever you say, hey, this is what I want to do, that's up to you. But you need to just say, okay, here's what I'm going to do. But you want to say, I want to do X by doing Y by this date. So this is just a one-week commitment that you're going to make right now. That's all you're going to make. And when you do that, you're going to say to yourself, "What?" now again, we're giving the guidelines for us. We're saying no more than one grain per day and one fruit. For me, half a cup of fruit. The reason why I gave that is because when I've interviewed all these thin women, you know, they're like, I don't know, I probably have like maybe a, you know, a small, you know, sweet potato, you know, at lunch. And I don't know, I might have, you know, after dinner, I might have a half a cup of raspberries, you know, and it's just from me hearing what these women do. So that's why it's it's not about deprivation, but it's about balance. And some of you guys have been eating way too much sugar. And, you know, the Bible even says, don't eat too much honey or it will make you sick. And so this is a time our encouragement to you would be to have no more than one grain, one serving of grain. That'd be, you know, a small sweet potato or a half a cup of rice or something like that. And then half a cup of a low glycemic fruit or just half a serving of fruit, half a cup of fruit. For me this week, I'm going to have one cup of fruit just because I'm going to be making a lot of smoothies this week. And so, but I'm not going to have the grain. So instead of half of a cup of grain, I'm going to have up to one cup of of fruit per um, each day. And um, just because this particular week, my husband, I'm supporting my husband. I don't really want to do this, but I'm doing it for him. Um, For the next seven days, I'm just having smoothies. Um, And it's it's really just about balance and I'm really supporting him on this. Um, plus I have some, a little bit of skin issues. You guys can probably see at the top of my forehead, I have a little bit of red right here um, and I don't like that. So it all, whenever I do like a smoothie for seven days, it really kind of clears my face up. So I always love that. So that's one of the things that I'm committing to. So I'm just having basically this whole week a protein smoothie. Uh, I'm eating in a a six-hour eating window. 
And it's six hours. And so like at probably 12 o'clock, maybe I'll have one smoothie and then maybe at six, I'll have another. So that's kind of my commitment for this week and maybe add in a few 24 hours. So a fast. So you have to decide what you want to do. This has been a Sopranto Media Production. 